it's a optional video. Uh, I'm going to be trying to draw a little bit more sketchy uh, for this year in Product 310. Some people have been saying, how do we sketch faster and easier? Uh, if we're not suited to some of the other stuff, I'm going to zoom in here and see what we can see. So today we're going to try and sketch this ugly functional object. You can see that it's a kind of a cheapy hinge. I think it's from Ikea uh, from years ago. And you can see it's just pressed metal. There are some features we would like to show. Chamfer, for example, or a relief here to, so it doesn't get stuck in a corner, which is not perfectly square or flat uh some easy metal uh some crease marks here we, we might take an attempt at trying to get these sorted out and so on and so forth another thing we're going to be trying to get here is uh, use some of our uh, sort of standardized uh, view sorry just turn the page here and try to get to the top corner where are we there it is uh, i'm using quite a big sheet here so hopefully it'll work out okay um, I'm going to draw a small thumbnail here. There is a file uh, up on the uh, uh with a bunch of diametrics uh, that are standardized. This is stuff from the 60s. Um, what I'm going to do here is kind of use uh, that idea to get my diametric sorted. The goal here, I'm going to draw with a smaller pencil here, is to use the similar, not exactly, because it's hard to do uh, with just a sketch, is use an angle of about 15 uh, with an angle on the other side of about 45. Now, if this was a cube, the dimensions would be one to one on the right face, and then receding into the back up to the left in a way would actually only be a half. This is a little squashed. Um, you could, for example, if you find this too short looking, uh, the whole point of this today is gonna be to kind of feel it out. If you wanna go up to about two thirds, that would be fine. Um, so the idea here is just to try and get, even though it's paramet uh, paraline, so I don't know if that's two thirds or even more back to the unit. I'm doing it already. So we're trying to sketch this in a way, sorry, using an eraser a lot here, to try and get it so that it looks kind of more correct to what we're used to from perspective, but still parallel. So parallel, 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 and parallel, parallel, parallel. So I'm gonna try and stick to that about that size. Uh, to keep it looking not so bad. So that's my goal here. 45 on the left, up about two thirds or a half over to the right, 15 degrees or half of what we're used to on isometric. And we're going to be drawing our object here. The goal here today is to not get so carried away with exactitude uh, from the start, but to kind of discover uh, the shapes as we go along. So again, just trying to get everything zoomed here correctly. Uh, there's a work table in the background here, so just trying to find my edges here. So my middle's about here. Uh, I'm gonna use a thicker pencil today. Uh, and the goal here is to uh, try and not smudge or go out of focus too much. Um, I'm going to use that. Uh, you may see also, depending on how it goes, a, a more of a sharper, easier pencil. And if we're lucky, if we're, I'm ambitious here, I'm going to use a thicker, uh, almost carpentry pencil to uh, go sit around the edges and all that sort of stuff. So that'll show up later in the sketch. These are all about B leads. Uh, so I don't have any H's or HB's even in these bigger leads. So I'm going to start with this black pencil, see how it goes. Um, I'm not going to sharpen it, so it's quite blunt already. Uh, so the lines will be quite thick and rough. The goal here is to use some uh, logic from Artland to get set up. Uh, let's just have another quick look at this. I'm going to try and draw it. Uh, 
going to draw this quite big to make a point. Keep in mind, we're not going to be drawing the hollow, or should we? I'm actually going to draw it hollow side up. Uh, so that'll be most interesting. It'll probably show the, the most view, uh, the most detail, or the most uh, content in one view. So we'll draw it like, kind of like that-ish. This face here will be our one-to-one. -one. So we're going to draw it kind of like that. So I'm going to start, it's quite thin compared to its length. So it's, this length is quite a bit longer than its thickness. So I'm going to draw about a quarter of the page across up here. Again, patience if I go out of sync or if it goes a bit fuzzy. We'll try and uh, do this. Now, this is <clears throat> this is kind of the first time I've drawn this, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, and we're just trying to get this optional way of doing things. Notice if we go to the thumbnail, vertical lines are vertical. If you look at the document I've posted, you'll be able to see how to rotate this. But for us on a piece of paper, if we scan it, it doesn't make any difference. We're going to go about half quarter. So beginning here, see if I can focus on that. And we're going to draw a line. Now, again, I'm going to be moving around. You might be rotating your page. But I'm going to definitely be using the side of this to try and guide my hand. Um, because it's quite a bit of a big sheet of paper, I'm going to be whole, hooking my pinky over it quite far out. Whoa. And shaking like crazy. I just drank tons of coffee. So there's our first line. So that's going to be my leading edge here. It's a bit far over. I'm actually going to start that again. Patience. Sorry, this is not a very polished video coming up. So just do a try and get a nice straight line up through kind of the middle. And what I'm going to do is we're going to be looking for to have the shapes emerge out of the out of the sketch. So we're going to be using a more artistic temperament here, perhaps. And you can notice that I'm trying to draw in one even line here as much as I can. I am going to use from time to time a sheet of paper or whatever I can find here. It's about the right length. I'm just going to say, okay, well, that's my height. I need to make sure that this height doesn't go off the top of the paper here. So just being a little careful, I'm kind of defining my unit after the fact, make it a little shorter. And again, one of the big advantages of drawing them on this big, and this is kind of garbagey newsprint paper, is just it picks up the lead really fast. You'll be able to see a smudge here, it really works. But the goal here is just to kind of rough it out. That's my unit. Now I just have to find a piece of paper that is long enough for that somewhere. Sorry, I'm wandering around here. There you go. I've got a piece of news. Oh, piece of newspaper here that I'll use. <laughs> no, it's not quite long enough. Sorry, I'm hunting around here. Here. I'm not bother ripping it and just get my unit in. Sorry about that. So there's my unit. Zero to one. So because it's a one to one on this side, go out here. Try and get my line as yeah, kind of as good as I can. Vertically. Make sure I'm in the right vicinity. That's close enough. So, now keep in mind that what I've got here is 
has to fit on the page. So what we're kind of doing here is trying to figure out where I have to go. I think this is too high. Right, I'm going to run out of space up here. So instead, I'm going to come closer to the bottom of the page. Parallel line. It's easy to change once we've got it going. Put our new unit in here. Gives our give ourselves more room at the top. Essentially. And just connect these guys together. Again, now that we've got our paper correctly proportioned and set up, just gonna lightly, well, get rid of these extra lines just to get set up. So you're getting the full story here. How does Colin actually sketch? At about 45 ish or whatever. But the key thing here is I'm going to go for a slightly different uh, scale here. Now, one thing I can do is go for exactly half. But I want it to be about two thirds. What I'm actually going to do is go for about two thirds, put my unit on there, and then make a new unit on the other side of the page. So we have a double sided ruler here. This seems counterintuitive, but it's actually not that bad to do it this way. You have one ruler, which is the front face, vertical and to the right. And then we have another one, which we'll be using as the unit on the other side. Again, if this was a cube, this would be our size. Now, keep in mind, our actual shape is not a cube. So again, parallel and reality. Parallel on the sketch. We want to make sure that we're doing okay. Put our marks down there and check our lengths. Not doing too bad. So again, just flipping the ruler around back and forth. And getting our cube here. Now, notice how rough I am right now. This is okay. Now, what I'm going to do is kind of explore and find the shape in here. So there's my cube in projection. Now, the part itself is not that size. Uh, I'm not going to inflict you on watching me measure this thing. But for now, you'll just have to believe me. It's The ratio is, of course, one to one, one direction. About 36 millimeters both ways. And its thickness is, unsurprisingly, half of that. So we have a half cube. Now we need to find a half on the smaller measure. Again, just to give ourselves a little help in the hand here. Here's half of my small unit. Again, small. And I can mark that in all the way around. And that's going to be our actual shape. So I drew the cube first just to make a point that if we were interested in the actual shape, that's where we'd stop. So just again, to keep our life easy, I would normally just leave this, but to keep the video a little bit under control, there's our shape. So now I'm going to actually just look at the thing, try and figure out what's going on here. Now, this is one to one. So I'm just going to say there is a chamfer there. Chamfer is goes right across the part. So is it exact? Well, I'm looking for this to be about this. So that's not a bad start. Down here at the ends is rounded. Now this is a little more difficult. We could, for example, go ahead here and fold it all up and all this stuff. However, halfway, if you want, take this up. Because this is one to one. Is it exact? Right? So this is the dilemma here. We have this arc we want to do here. In some ways, it's easy to figure out where it should be on this side. So in a way, this is kind of going to be stretched up. But to be honest, I'm going to try and make this look not too bad. So again, to keep the viewer, I'm going to try and show the viewer what exactly is going on here. It's important for this to look direct, to be honest. So 
So take that same measure and bring it over here. You'll notice I'm just using my finger halfway. Again, drawn with the shoulder here. And we've got our two faces. Sort it out. There is a thickness to this. Importantly as well, there's a circular, circular sort of profile in the center of these two arcs. You look at this guy. Now it might be clearer from the top what's going on. So we're gonna have some arcs in here. Again, trying to get it about even, so it's kind of it's gonna be this distance is gonna be different than it is on the other side, but it's about halfway ish again you can see that i'm not doing too well here the key thing is that we're kind of positioned this is not in the right spot already because it's not flush we put the pencil across the top you won't be able to see this but the re this little shape is actually recessed off for the function of the hinge corner brace whatever this thing is okay but nonetheless once we've got this keep an eye on this we can see kind of where the bend starts which heads over across. So we have to do the same on the top, trying to get it about the same size. So again, tangencies, if we want to talk about that, should be in the middle of squares, all that sort of stuff. A little bit further for the same sort of thumb to the beginning of the thing, the bend, which we'll draw in a second here. This is our shape. Again, parallel in reality, parallel in the sketch. Keep in mind there is a thickness to this. I'm going to actually map that in and say it's about finger, thumbish, both sides. We're going to have a silhouette coming around. Now, the key thing here is this one. It's a curved, like this whole shape is curved up and around. This is starting to look a little too thin, so just taking it up. Now, as soon as it gets to here, it heads across. So I'm just trying to get it fairly smooth across. I'm starting to see the shape emerge already. So I'm just going to Sketch in these edges. Start to make a deal, a bigger deal about this. These are curves. So I'm going to put some cheating construction in here. Same going to be on the inside. Again, if it gets a little heavy, just lighten it out. Start looking for some stuff on the insides here. The, the key thing here is this is hollow. So now that we've got that, where do we go with this, right? This whole shape is fairly simple, except for, well, it's going to be blurry, but there's these little kind of curvy cone shapes. Again, not flush with the outside surface. So down here, it's going to be uh, a little bit off kilter. I'm going to start by replicating that, leave, making sure to leave this top stuff up try and show the viewer that it's actually lower. Do it again, like, so again, essentially, going slightly down. Trying to get the size about the same. And now we've got contours here. So one thing we're gonna have to do eventually is figure out the thickness of this metal. I'm going to go across and start to figure that out right now. Again, this thickness here is going to be repeated. So we can have a curve, starting to curve out. Goes around the back. Now this has the same thing. We need to show the cone. If we look at this, the cone actually comes down quite tight to this part. We keep on going. It comes out and down again and then hits right at the edge of this, starts heading off towards this one. 
same over here we've got a down and we want a bit more construction to figure out what's going on here so if we go across the halfway we're slightly lower so then this area here becomes the truncated part so down and around so again using this to figure out where we have to get to if we want we should do a check here make sure we're doing it right over here because i see an error so we've got this down over here oh. error so there's an error in here i'm gonna try and get myself set up first so this contour line is what i'm mapping all the way across here it's hidden all the good points and eventually it ends up going all the way around the part and see an error right in here so i'm just gonna get that sorted out so again it comes in here so you can see some problems in here so a bit of cheating and then just Figuring out where, again, sorry, I'm drawing fairly heavy here for the video, but I'm trying to show contours correctly. We've got the same here. We've got this curve here and here. See, parallel, parallel. So we've got the back face folded up. So we're kind of good here. Keep in mind, we won't be able to see this whole part in here, but it is important to show the viewer what's going on with this shape. So again, just starting to find, in a way, the outside contour. And you'll notice that I start to darken this quite a bit. Can I make this clear? This is not a sharp corner, but a rounded corner. I'm trying to keep this about the same. It's a bit shallow here. It's rounded though and straight down. That's good. And coming around here, I'm trying to do a sort of perimeter sketch here, a perimeter edge all the way around using this fairly heavy thick line. This could be our time to try the monster pencil. Right, so again, if you find you're using, if you have bigger pencils, then why not just have a go at it? Again, I'm using this kind of fairly rough. It's a bit much. Going around, trying to, and again, cheating here, but trying to. Oh, what's going on here? Whoa, nice lump. Now, what you can do is use a sharper corner of the lead that I've kind of flattened out here to try and show the viewer what's going on there. Like, so we've got the overall shape sorted out. Next, I'm gonna, we could continue using this if I want. I could go back and go to a more smaller pencil. This is my normal, typical pencil, but now I'm just going to try and show the thickness of the metal here. Alright, so making a big deal about that offset. There's my inside edge, and now here's my corner coming around. Now, if you notice, I don't know, pause and watch, have a look at this. I'm kind of cheating in here, going on the other side of my construction. My construction is not perfect, so I'm not that bothered. As long as I can emphasize the thickness of this thing. So, you can suddenly see the point of drawing so such a large piece of paper. Like this is actually 
quite a thick shape here so I can get away with quite a bit of edge. I'm going to come back in here later and sort this out. It's getting a bit blurry. So again, coming through here and discovering in a way the edge that we're after. Not quite far enough. We get a little bit off kilter. A little bit of fix up. All right, so again, trying to stick to our construction here. And if we have problems, you can't see what I'm doing here, but I'm erase, cleaning my eraser on a piece of paper, trying to keep things on the straight and narrow. So again, just discovering in a way things. So less, less uh, panic about stuff and just a little bit more sort of let's figure out where things are as we go along. Again, adding extra parts there. Well, if it gets bad, clean it out. Don't get worried too much about this. I'm just trying to show the viewer what's going on. Quite thick and messy in here. So just get that out and just finish in the tidier edges and then add our perimeter back on. Again, kind of bad and messy in here, but tidy it up. It's not bad. Next, big deal is this sort of shape in here. We've got these sort of background shapes that are following around. So it acts as a kind of a contour line. We've also got this edge here which is going to be uh, going to go around and connect it's tempting here to just do a full construction but what i'm going to do is try and build in what the viewer should be seeing i'm going to try and show the cone essentially of this part and just some contour lines Again. Now I have a little small eraser here, sometimes used. Uh, it's wedged already for me, so it makes me gives me an easy time to try and show edges here. So you can also just kind of tidy up your normal eraser, fix this up. So in a way, this approach to sketching does require a little bit of erasing, which is kind of use the eraser as a sketching tool itself. So you can kind of discover what has to be there and then what doesn't. So it's kind of a it's like garbage zen saying, but whatever. So there's our edge. Just have to, again, it might need some clean. Your eraser is going to get dirty with this sort of stuff. But this is a big deal how this functions. So I'm making a big deal about how it looks here. Again, you might have some contour lines, but the key thing here is to show the viewer that there is, in fact, a gap here. I'm actually drawing a thick piece of construction right on top. Then from here we can kind of figure out, okay, where is the edge of this? So inside. 
I need to make a bigger deal about how you can see through the hole. I'm gonna show the viewer where that construction will continue quite loose. Just trying to say there is an edge here. Again, might need to add, or because it is now an ex, an ex, a perimeter part, add some stuff onto that. And just keep an eye on how it's looking. Uh, if it's not clear, for example, this edge, I think needs to be bigger. Even though it's not completely sharp on the part, I want to show the viewer that this face here is quite flat. So again, just make sure it looks like it's connecting together. And this will, I'm gonna be copying this over to here. I know kind of what's coming here, so I've got some outside edge. So this one is quicker and easier because I've discovered in a way what I need to do from the other side. It's going to be a peripheral edge here. Again, I'm using my smaller pencil, sharper. And because it's mechanical, I don't have to sharpen it around them. So there's my sort of annular surface. Again, if you find that it's getting a little blurry in certain spots, just give it a shot with a sharper eraser. Not bad. And we can see here it is again coming down. So we've got the same structure as before. Right, so we have a contour line kind of blending in here. It's not ideal, but this one on this side is clearer for us. What's going on with this contour? Again, kind of goes around the back and then hits a silhouette edge and comes up and joins. Same down here. And that will fade away, but this will actually be a silhouette within the part. This piece comes around. I'm just going to cheat your way through here. Try and show the viewer what you would like them to see. So, contour lines all over the place. Edges turning into silhouettes. Again, just kind of looking at the part to figure all this stuff out. And then Or this bump, and then heading down. Out here we've got a blending, kind of blending, going into the blurry edge in the round. And if you want to emphasize that there is actually a round there, just put a contour line that shows the viewer what's going on. Should repeat it over here. And again, up here, I'm interested in showing that the part is lower here. So add a little extra piece of construction just to say I'm higher than the back. And we're not doing too bad. Uh, down here, we've got an edge, which we'll be able to see. Here's the edge of the part coming past. It goes quite close. It's going to come around and join. Again, onto the edge, onto the edge of things. Not so good there. But the key thing here is to discover that we've got a visible part, visible edge. I'm starting to look at my other piece thinking that's not so good. If it looks funny shaped, fix it up. This one down here is not that great right now. It's a little bit too curved. And just get in there. Give yourself some room to re-sketch that shape. It should be more shaped like so, I think. And there we go. That's a really messy representation so far of how to do this. Um, for all of you who are looking, this is quite rough, a uh, big sheet, uh, but not too bad. One thing that's kind of missing is the three-dimensionality of it. Um, we can do some cross-hatching here. It's probably not such a bad idea. 
uh, one decision is just where um, we have this continuous face because all the way around and then is hidden on the inside uh, we're used to things on the inside being a bit darker so I'm going to go ahead here and put some cross hatching in here I'm going to leave the inside of this hole clear Now, one thing we can do in here, and this is not something we've ever done in Mac 200 before, uh, is to smear this. If you take your finger, you can kind of try and uh, keep it clean. Uh, one way you can keep, for example, edges tidy, I'm using an old ruler here, an old edge, is to, for example, you can hold this down on top and it leaves the protects the hidden or the underside from that getting too smeary again if it's not clear enough use your eraser to emphasize that edge there so what i'm doing here is going around and saying okay well these edges are really one of the big deals about this piece so I'm going to go here and actually clean out any color or lead here and make a big deal about how these edges are cleaned or essentially white once I've got that I can kind of tidy it up let's see what I'm doing here I'm just trying to show the viewer as always everything that I would like them to see uh, and you're trying to manipulate the, the viewer into seeing what we want them to be emphasized so again for example this I find too dark so again just go in here and clean it out Uh, I want to make sure this looks like it's connected correctly. So I'm just now once you've started smearing, uh, it's hard to stop sometimes, but you can now put cross hatching over the top of it again. It gives you a chance to really emphasize a piece that you want to darken or lighten by putting a dark piece beside it. Again, if your cross hatching gets too much, you can always lighten it. But again, sometimes a little smear can do a lot of work. And then you can emphasize that shape down there. Because the thing is symmetrical, I'm going to do the same up here. And just following along. Again, my pencil's getting quite blunt here. around and through the part again just this is quite rough right so this would be in Mac 200 would have been unacceptable almost unicorn eye-ish show me your feelings children sort of thing but for us trying to get show shape here so again I'm just gonna hide a piece so I can kind of push my thumb over this it gives me a chance to clean get a cleaner edge on one side I'm using my finger now, just trying to emphasize to the viewer what all of this is looking like. Again, if you're keen, you can use your thinner pencil for all this. The, th the heavier the lead you're using, a B to B, uh, the easier this will be. The problem is, if you go too far, tends to become almost too easy and everything starts to become smeary. Focus in here. So again, 
it's in, okay, well, this is not clear enough. I want this top edge to be extremely obvious. But this is one shape that goes all the way around the part. Again, you can just add cross hatching as you see fit. I want to emphasize that this is conical. Right now it looks a little bit curved. And then just hide our errors inside of the sketch. Top of this is again clear. You can see smear is coming through. So again, you want to clean out stuff that becomes too dark. Now, some of you who are watching this or have made it all the way through this tedium uh, are going to be wondering, well, where do we draw the line here? Like, when, how do you know when you're done? Uh, the argument is always, once the viewer can see it uh, enough, then you should just stop. Uh, that is up to you, of course, to uh, sketch it. But again, you can see all this smear down here. I'm actually not that bothered with it. Um, I am going to try and darken up some this lower edge because the light's kind of coming from above. I want to clearly define this part. So again, parallel in reality, parallel in the sketch. And actually, I'm leaning quite hard here with my thick pencil, which is a B. So I'm trying to make it obvious what's going on. And there we go. I've had enough. So there is a ugly functional object, uh, IKEA bracket. Uh, kind of done quite uh, rough, kind of almost arty. Again, just gonna, and I'm looking at, I'm sorry, I'm looking away from it from a distance. If you can't see, I'm thinking this is not clear enough. So again, as soon as I discover that something is not clear enough, just add more lead to it. I'm trying to do it in one pass here to make sure that it's uh, fairly uh, clear. I'm also looking through my phone here, which is taking the video, to make sure it looks okay. Uh, so there we go. We're we're not too bad there. So again, in summary, uh, using a whole bunch of stuff uh, all in one go here to get a technical object drawn correctly uh, in a way that's I think obvious to the viewer uh, what's going on. Uh, in a way also that is easier to sketch quick. Uh, again, this has been quite a long video. There's a lot of stuff here. Uh, just blathering and all the rest of it. So hopefully this uh, is useful. Again, it gives you a chance to uh, sketch shapes uh, differently uh, from the usual sort of very pedantic Mech 200 style that we've become used to. Uh, and hopefully you get something out of this that uh, appeals to you. Uh, this can actually lead to kind of more interesting uh, shapes. And just let you kind of have a go at getting shapes out that are more, uh, maybe a bit more correct. Uh, so again, if I see something that it looks like it's going to help the viewer understand, just add a little bit of cross hatching. So on and so forth. Um, there we go. I think that's about it for this one. So we went from a thumbnail which is based on some old school diametric sort of theory. So one to one to two thirds or half ish, whatever it was. And then laid out the big box, which is going to contain our object. And then very roughly uh, sketched in and discovered the detail as we went along. So less construction uh, up front. It's quite a blunt pencil. It's a two millimeter bead lead, uh, lead holder essentially. Uh, and worked our way through and used the eraser this time for uh, negative shapes. Hopefully that worked out well. 
and see you in the next video.